So. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're on. Okay. Yeah. I just feel like talking today, man. That's good. I'm glad. This is the first time I felt like talking in a long time. I'll talk about my issues, but I'm going to be careful. Uh, you know? All right. This goes out, uh, this video goes out to my haters, I. So if you come to me, shaming my husband or me about him relapsing, I will not be kind to you, okay? Alcoholism is a disease, which means he is sick and he will be sick with this disease for the rest of his life. And you want to, for your lulls, make a joke out of alcoholism, which is real. It's a horrible thing people go through. And it's not fair to judge someone who is battling that demon. Because we all have our own demons. We battle every single fucking day. I'm currently waiting to have a mammogram. Okay? Because I have this huge lump underneath my left breast. And it seeps every day. It has a really bad smell to it. I've been on antibiotic treatments for it. And it will not heal. It will not heal. So I'm currently waiting for a mammogram for that. I don't need additional stress. I hate him bastards because my husband relapsed. Okay? He is doing the right thing. He has contacted his therapist and he will talk about it. I am there for him as a support, not an enemy. So don't try to do that. Let's pit Shannon and Jason against each other game. Okay? Yeah. It never works. And it's never going to. This is just not going to happen. I know they find it entertaining or whatever to think that it would be possible to do that. That you would be the reason that we break up. You're not that important, bro. Do you understand what I'm saying? To whoever it is, I don't care. Any reaction hater channel that's had that in mind, you're not that important to us. Do you get it? This is love. Like, we have love. And we go through mental health issues. Yes, and me substance issues. She's clean with that, praise God. She's got no substance abuse issues whatsoever. Me? I like to drink, and I do still. And I've acknowledged that. Now I gotta be on the wagon and stay on them. Because I was saying to myself, you don't even like alcohol anymore. Bullshit. Not true. I was lying to myself. Because when that fireball passed my mouth for the first time, I was like, yes. Here's to three miserable months on the wagon and all the irreparable harm that it's cost me. Jack, in The Shining, at the bar. White man's burden, Lloyd, my man. White man's burden. I would watch that scene over and over again. As a kid, I was like 14, and I was obsessed with that scene. Why? Look at who I am now. There's alcoholism on both sides of my family. 
the Davises and Egrofs both have problems with alcohol, and most of us have stayed away from it. That most of the family did stay away from I it. I stay away from it because of the alcoholism in my family. My uncle Bill Morgan was he he literally went through crates of Jack Daniels, the bottles. He was one of the nicest man, men you'd ever want to meet. He was a Navy guy, and he was a, 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 a barbershop singer. And on his grave up there, right down the road from me, is a barber pole on his grave. Beautiful. He was a good man. But he loved to party with his booze, and he loved his Italian girls. His girl made sauce, man, real good sauce, and, and she would cook. She would take just the meatball meat with the cooking sauce simmering and just plump them in there. Meatballs, just pop them yeah, in there. Yeah, that's how you should be doing it. That's how Italians do it. My mom was, like, confused because, like, it's like, no, we got to caramelize the no. meat first and stuff. Mm -hmm. No. No, no, no. It gets so luscious it when does. you cook it that way. Yeah, it's true. That's the Italian way. It's that's the how my mom. Way. That's how my mom taught me that. My my mom taught me how to do it. That's how her mom taught her how to do it. That's how my grandmother taught my, or my great grandmother taught my <laughs> grandmother how to do it. <clears throat> I mean, we have we have a family sauce that we've been passing around for generations. I don't know how many generations. It's just a lot. It's awesome. But my sister never was a good cook, so she never learned it. I Aww. did though. You got the cooking chops. I did. I learned it. I was willing to cook. I loved to cook. I still love to cook. I miss cooking. Everything. Is... You miss life. I miss life, yeah. It sucks when your body breaks down. It Fuck sucks. That. Yeah. I want a wife to take out and show off. And these fucking workers, you know, these girls at the place are like, oh, how's your wife doing? How's your wife doing? You know, I can't. It's like it feels like you live alone and it sucks. I think they all know that we're Shani and Rev. Uh, uh, the majority of them anyway. I, I don't it's how I, we're treated in the public. Like they see us and their eyes get really wide and excited. <clears throat> Like they're seeing a celebrity. I can say for a fact that a few definitely have, know of this, what what I am, but they don't say it. No. But they get the looks I get. Yeah, I they know. Yeah, I've had uh, that nurse that did my blood, she recognized me, I'm pretty sure, and she hates me. She's a miserable woman. Oh, my God. She was so mean to me. Just ugly person. She's very and, miserable. And and I was just so, in, I was try I knew she was having a bad day. So I was, I, when I see someone having a bad day, I feel like it's my duty to, to compliment them and make them feel good about themselves. So they don't have a fucking, so it makes their day less shittier. Wow. Someone complimented me and said that I was pretty or something, Amen. you know? Yeah. I do that for people. I try to too. Yeah, Cause I, absolutely. I know that is important. Sometimes you smiling at a stranger could save their life. Mm-hmm. And you didn't even know it. You saved the life and you didn't even know it. Because you smiled at someone with genuine love and compassion. But now in this culture, though, like, it's so... <laughs> like, you could literally just want to do what you just said. Like, say something positive to somebody to bring their day up. But in this, the hypersexualized culture, that can literally be taken as, oh, you're hitting on me. Yes. What the fuck do you you can't then? You can't be nice and you can't. No, I'm going you know to what I mean? stick to my culture, <laughs> to my roots yeah. as an Italian woman and do what the Italians do. I'm going to love you motherfuckers uh -huh. regardless if you like me or not. Uh -huh. Oh. Bernie Peepee. -pee. That's why I've been having the feeling of urinary tract infections. Because I was drinking. Idiot. Idiot. See? What we what did I what did I turn on after I we got off our live stream? Yeah. Okay, what's the name of the channel? The Institute of Human Anatomy. Is that what it is? I think so, yeah. Okay. YouTube channel, Institute 
of human anatomy. And the, it's a ginger individual male, big dick, guaranteed. So He finally learned that gingers have big dicks. No, he I never I, knew that. No, I just, you, you, you like ranted on this massive cocks of ginger men one day. Yeah. And I was like... I don't, I'm not aware of this situation because it's true. I because I don't seek out dick pics. I know. So I was, I was like, "What is this?" But apparently, it's the case. So we're gonna go with that. Anyway, this <laughs> dude is really cool and he's smart. And Shani put on a video about basically the toxic effects of alcohol on the entire body, going from stomach to from your mouth to your esophagus. It, the whole deal, as it enters your mouth, because he said most people ingest their alcohol by mouth, and I was like, well, I've heard some college kids' stories that uh, there's a different hole that it, they they wanted it to go in. But I, that's not my business. Okay? That could kill you doing that. That's so stupid, doing. Don't do that. No. I didn't say do it. People are dumb. Anyway, continue on. All you need to know, in a nutshell of this video, if you watch it and you drink still after it, you you are self-destructive on a level that's amazing. Because I'm going to tell you, I had no idea the intricate, uh, the little things like like the fact that there's a there is a mucous membrane around your stomach that. When you drink, it pretty much immediately starts taking in the alcohol content. This mucous membrane in your stomach. Every place along the line that it touches, the insides of your mouth, there's mucous membranes that are in your throat and esophagus. The, the alcohol is absorbed there too. The bottom line that you need to know with all of it is that alcohol is poison. You are literally poisoning yourself when you put the bottle to mouth. And then Chief, Chief said to McMurphy in the bed, McMurphy's fucking in a coma. Chief goes to, to McMurphy. He goes, and then my father, he will put the bottle to his mouth. But he wasn't drinking from the bottle. The bottle was drinking from him. Mm-hmm. That's some powerful native knowledge. Right? Don't take the white man's burden on your back because it's toxic. It'll kill you, period, over time. And if you can't control your intake, if you're an addictive personality like me, a chain smoker and all that shit, if you're like me and you put one drink to your mouth, you're dead. If you don't have somebody like Shani come into your life and rip you away from it, you're dead. You're dead there. At that moment that you're putting the bottle to your mouth, you're dead already. First drink, if you have that type of personality. Well, I have blacker lungs from cigarettes. Yeah, but it takes a long time to, to kill yourself with cigarettes. And some people's genetics, they could they smoke their whole life five packs like my great my grandpa Egroff. George Bor Burns. Yeah. He lived till 101 and smoked a big stogie every day, all, all the time. All day. He, there was never a time when he wasn't smoking. Yeah, he always had a stogie in his mouth. And he didn't develop lip cancer or, or mouth cancer. Nothing. None of, none of it. My grandpa, Egroff, smoked five packs of non-filtered, I think Pall Malls was his brand, non-filtered Pall Malls, and he got prostate cancer. And died from that, from metastasized bone cancer, from the prostate cancer. That's how he died. Everyone's saying stick to weed. Absolutely the way to go. It's God's plant. If you have problems in your head, in your, 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 your aching body parts, smoke weed every day. We watched uh, like five minutes of this video on fentanyl. Mm. And dudes, it's so weird. If you get addicted to fentanyl... When you withdraw, your body reacts like you have fibromyalgia. It's fucking crazy. And they feel pain like it's the same freaking feeling, like <laughs> having what? No. It's Sorry. it's like the same freaking feeling of having fibromyalgia. 
Um, because he said for people who are going through a drawl, having a shirt on them hurts. That's crazy. I can I can so relate relate to that. <laughs> it's like holy shit, it's fibromyalgia. It mimics the myelin being off your nerves. Yes. That's insane. It mimics having the, the depleted myelin. Exactly. That is so crazy. Right? But who the hell would want to put a pill in them that someday that's going to happen to you? Because it will. Yeah. You can't stop. Yeah. You, because it, the, the, the more you take it, the more you need to get high. Mm-hmm. And it's the same thing with alcohol. You need more and more and more, and that's what that's when your body just starts go you're fucking killing me. Uh, you'll start getting the yellow eyes, the yellow skin, all of that shit. And your body is saying, No more stop. And you're like, No. I li I like this feeling. Bad. Self destructive demonic behavior. It is. Grew up in a family of alcoholics. I stay away from the stuff. God bless you, Captain Ahab. We love you. I heard that even a grain of Fenty can kill you. That's right, Hella. Exactly. Yeah. That's why cops go so, are so reactive when they hear fentanyl. Yeah. Because it could kill their dog. So, oh, two I milligrams. Know. Then we're going to make fun of the cops like, for uh, being worried uh, about okay. it. Okay. Like, for instance, I, I'm just going to... I'm just... Like... I... Like, for instance, I take 15... Milligrams of meloxicam. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm taking I, the biggest dose I'm ha I have out of all the medicine I take is the 600 milligram milligrams of gabapentin. And you're telling me two milligrams could kill a man of oh. fentanyl? And it's, it's, go, it's rampant on street drugs? That's why they're crazy about powder. Yeah. Like, wait, literally, that one cop video, like, he was freaking out. He's he like, was. you're going to kill my fucking dog. Yeah, because the powder went all over the car. Yeah, all over the back of the car. She could have killed and, herself. And he was like, you tell me, what is that fucking powder? It was fentanyl. They could have killed the dog easy. Yeah, it could, like, powder all over the cop car. Fentanyl all over the cop the car. back seat. And they spilled it in the back seat. Too. Two milligrams. That's all it takes. How how many milligrams would it take to kill a dog? Up to fucking nothing. Less than two milligrams. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Oh. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. All right. All right. Fine. Johnny Depp. All Jesus right. Christ. I forgive you. I'm sorry about my reaction. It's just I've been set up so many yeah, times by for, people, and I ain't going to do that stuff. And forgive Johnny Depp, too, because he's damaged. <laughs> he is damaged. He is so fucked in the Hollywood arm. messed him up. Bad. He, he was probably raped at, like, 15. You know what I mean? By the industry. He was so beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, that's definitely. Yeah. Definitely. And the same... It's thing. still... Just because you're abused <laughs> does not give you an excuse... To be a scumbag. I didn't say that. I know. He chose to be a scumbag. That's what I'm trying to say. I know, but you gotta forgive it. Yeah. You gotta, because he's fucked in the head, man. Gone. Probably a really kind, nice man, actually, in reality. That's what everybody says about him. That you just let people stay in his apartments. Good people don't do that. Or bad people don't do that. Unless you deal in drugs. Oh, anyway. Whatever. Okay, well, I, don't embellish it. I'm not but, embellishing anything. Who said, who said Johnny Depp deals drugs, man? Who's, who's ever said that? I'm just saying, people uh, who usually let strangers in their house are drug dealers. Oh, my God. Okay, well, that's like that's like the haters saying about us stuff, you know, slander. Hi, Chubby Dubby. I'm just, I'm just looking at reality and my experience. Mm -hmm. I get you. Amber Heard destroyed him. I'm a recovering addict. I'm almost six years clean. Recovery is possible. Yet. Thank you very much, Judah. Ju Judah? Juday? Juday, Emily? Thank uh, you, Captain Ahab. Thank you. God bless you. We love you. You're so kind. I, it's a blessing to know kind people, man. I get he gets depressed about his mom. Yeah. I was the one... Con consoling him about it for years. That's true. 
Absolutely. And my bottle was my, 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 it was my comfort. It was the reason I didn't fucking kill myself. That's the truth. Yeah, it may have been your comfort, but it was killing you. Yes. It, that's, uh, there's a time and a season. And, and Paul would have said to me, you really hurt yourself, son. You know? You hurt yourself, and there's no reason to do that. You got. I you. loved you so much. You helped save my soul. I. It's all Jesus. Uh, it's life all, debt, man. Fuck no. It's all Jesus. Life debt to my brother in Christ. It's no fucking debt, hun. But thank you. <laughs> no one else was doing it. No one else fucking did it. I did it. Instead, all these other people were just fucking taking advantage of you. Yeah, I know. And, and just taking all of your fucking money. Anything they could, yeah. I know. They were trying to help you through your alcoholism. No. I was, though. No, no. And, we, and that was actually, you know, with the one individual, Phil. I mean, that was literally you coming in. That's why he was so rough against you. Yeah, it's because his control was being taken away. Not control... The gravy train, money. He knew that was going to end. If I got with a chick. It, it had nothing to do with you. He actually liked you a lot. Mm -hmm. He liked you a lot. He thought you were hilarious and cool. Uh, he started attacking you because he saw the gravy train coming to an end. I bought this man an Area 51 computer. Okay. And he wouldn't give me $40 when I needed it from him. So he said, yeah, what do you get my social security check? I'll give you some money. He, did. he fucking him, blocked me. You gave him more than that, Jason. You gave him... No, $40 I asked him for once. No, you've given once. him more than that. You've given him thousands upon thousands of no, dollars. Did, yeah, definitely. Every day he was begging mean, you for money. I didn't mean that that was all I gave him. Yeah. Uh, okay. He was, I was giving him $75 plus a day. I know. A day for his cigarettes and, and everything he wanted. Coffee. He wanted coffee in the morning and cigarettes. 75 bucks a day I was giving him at least. That's so, a good point. You should read that comment. That's for you. Okay. Just remember your parents are awaiting seeing you again in your best you can be, Rev. That, that they wouldn't want to see you wallowing in sorrow over them, right? Yeah, that's correct. Of course. I know they're happy where they're at. I'm sure of it. Shani even had a dream of them. Donnie, what's up? <laughs> Shut the fuck up, Donnie. I love you, Donnie. You're great. Uh, Shani had a dream of him in a, in a, the, 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 she described the car that my dad had in, when he was like 16. Yeah, they were just saying that, you know, hi. That's amazing to me. The same, you, you described his car. Hi, we're your in-laws. What's up? That's amazing. I believe Take it. care of my son. All right. <laughs> I keep him on weed, not alcohol. Uh, we need to actually get weed and get our medical cards. Yeah, well, money. $300 at least, plus, per person. Okay? That's what you're dealing with. Isn't that beautiful? Fuck them assholes, Fuck man. the system. Yeah, something that could heal you and help you, and they, they just price gouge it like fucking assholes. It's a business. Isn't that sweet? It is sweet. <laughs> it's a business hmm. right you gotta keep people suffering yeah thanks guys yeah they don't heal us they treat us cause it's more profitable right exactly it's not about healing they could heal us but Definitely. they choose not to heal us because treating the symptoms is more profitable ash Mer mammon worshiping demonic shit. Ugh. What the medical industry did oh. is take that Hippocratic oath and throw it right out the door. Shredded that shit. Freedom isn't free. Oh. 
Never was. It's just an illusion, baby. That's fucking it. Tierra SVP, yeah, you got it. Freedom should be free, though, man. That's why it's free. We should have our yards filled with fucking pot plants. That's why Bill Cooper, Bill Cooper would say it this way. Free dumb. He did that deliberately because freedom is free. If you live in a free country, what, you got to pay to be free? No, you're a citizen. That doesn't cost shit. You were born free. Hey, fucking Thomas Jefferson over here. No, our yard should have pot everywhere if we wanted to. And no one should have a fucking problem with it because it's none of anyone's goddamn business if someone wants to fucking light up a doobie once in a while. All the founders grew hemp. Yeah. What have you been talking about? What I miss? I like your hair, Rip. Thank you, Donnie. It's grown in nice. So is mine. Yeah, yours too. Shannon Keller. What's up? What's up? Shannon Keller. What's up? You didn't miss too much, Donnie. I relapsed on drinking, though, Donnie. You tell him, Shannon. That's what Donnie said. Right? Yeah, I relapsed drinking, Johnny. I had a bad one. But I'm on the I'm on the wagon again. I'll be all right. You will. I'm taking care of him, and I'm monitoring the money like a hawk. Mm -hmm. Because if I smell that shit... does happen, dude. If I smell that shit on his lips again... Rehab. Yes. If it happens again. No, do not pass go. They'll probably put you in outpatient rehab. Ugh. God, that's not going to work. If I You have to be severe to be inpatient, honey. You're not severe... It's just not gonna work if I if I continue to relapse. And they let me out. No, you're not gonna relapse. You're stronger than that. No problem. Don't don't beat yourself up about that. Thanks, dude. I I love you, Donnie. Yeah. They say relapse in part in part it is part of recovery. Well, man, what the fuck is that? It's <laughs> so you can learn the lesson. Oh. All right. You still haven't learned the lesson that. Drinking is toxic to you. You're addicted no, to I do. It. I do get that. Yeah, I got it. I got that when I was an active alcoholic, drinking every day, hundred proof liquor. I knew it was bad for me. I didn't give a fuck. It felt good in my brain to numb it. Ugh. Sing some typo negative songs. And you know, your me. therapist would tell you you got to find another way how to cope. Mm. Which he's gonna get a he 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 he's. In contact with his therapist. Yeah, I just texted her not long ago. People slip off their path sometimes. I, I yeah, I do. I I don't think it's acceptable. I have to be. I have to be perfect. I gotta. I gotta walk it without this shit. That, that's. I gotta walk my fucking walk without that. That's a requirement now. So yeah, I. It's had, not. It's not because of me, is it? No. I want it to be because of you. Well, if you weren't in my life, I don't know what I'd be right now. I have holy shit. I think I would be just watching, walking the streets of Scranton, I think, at this point. That's what I'd be doing. And die homo. Pretty sure. Jesus, Jason. Mm-hmm. I'm not kidding. You've got, got to I, value yourself a little bit more. No, nah, I'm telling you the truth. I I would take that that jacket. I'd put that jacket on myself. I'd walk out the door and I'd go to the Scranton PD and I'd go. Where do the homeless people go around here? And that'd be my life. I don't care. I want Jesus. It can be fun times being homeless. I'll be honest. That's it. That's what I would do. Either that or I would join a a, a monastery if I could. Oh, I'd love to join a nunnery. That would be lovely. Right. There you go. I don't know how you get involved with monastery. I'm not a, I'm not a born Catholic. I wasn't baptized Catholic, so. Yeah. I'm not, here, here's the thing. I'm not attracted to any other men but you. I, I just, I'm. Bobby. There's no sexual attraction to anyone but you, really. God bless you. At heart. this point. Because I've been so fucked up by people. I know. That it's like, I, I don't, I know. I would never go in the dating scene ever again. Donnie's got the fucking deal. He knows. Walking with Christ is the true inner peace, man. That's right. You need him. That's right, Donnie. See? 
that's why I always tell Donnie to shut the fuck up because Donnie, Donnie was saying dude, cool shit. You went four years without it. You should be proud of your fucking self. Yeah, no, I, I, I am proud. Uh, I, 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 it's God. He, he protected me from it, but I had a bad moment, and you did. Yeah, a weak moment, and it was triggered by Mother's Day. It, that's it. Yeah, Mother's Day was pretty bad. That triggered it. It was so bad. Yeah. <laughs> we love you, Donnie. You're the shit. Me and you got so depressed on Mother's Day. We were depressed, dude. I did not have a good Mother's uh, Day. I was and, depressed. And the boys were fighting the whole day. Oh, my God. That happens. I talked to the... I, I'm with the boys, and they're they're fighting the whole time. And yeah. it's like... Yeah, they're being brothers. And just it's like, fighting and nitpicking each other like Yeah, crazy. I... <sighs> oh my god. Nitpicking each other bad. Yeah. You're like, I can't take this today. I can't be referee <laughs> for you two. Yeah, you're the ref. Yeah, they're expecting me to be a referee. You I'm got not ref colors with the Amber Lynn. That's that's true. I'm not I'm not being your referee. Mm -mm. Okay? If you want to fight, do it, but right. don't involve me anymore. Not you guys my... are grown fucking men. Every day's a new day. That's right. You well, you wake up with Jesus, and, and you it. may say my sons aren't grown men, but they're fifteen and seventeen. They're men. Yeah, they're not boys. No, 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 no. They're no, not no, little no. boys. No, they're fifteen and seventeen. They're men. Yeah, they're they're young men. Period. Yeah. So, like, you want mommy to still get in your 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 fights and your fifteen oh. and seventeen bros? Oh. I ain't doing it. You do that at nine. Yeah. Yeah, when they're nine and I ain't eight, doing it. And ten. You guys are acting stupid. Yeah, you don't. You shouldn't need a ref. No, you talk this out now. Yeah, exactly. So Mother's Day wasn't good because the boys were fighting the whole day. But William and but they both like they love to do the little ribs now and then they, with each other. They, do they, I they, don't brothers? I, it, yeah, I guess come on, so. Michael and and no, they never did that. They with never each did other. that. No, huh. they've always been best friends with each other. I see. Michael and Joe. Speaker got covered. People thought I was an alcoholic. Those same people didn't realize I only drank like that when I was forced to be around them. I actually never liked drinking. It was how I copied. D coped. Yeah, I get you. I was a horn toad at that age. Yeah, <laughs> that was not my path. Zachary and Will are not like that. Mm -mm. Um, Not at all. Zachary's pretty. He 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 likes looking at girls, but like he's asexual Poppy. in a lot of ways. And William, he's he's homosexual. So yeah, and he's in a very hick town. And I say hick for a reason, a hick town. So it's very hard for him. Yeah, to find someone when everyone's like. God created man and woman for a reason, and just just hating on the poor kid. Crazy. He's not even a kid; he's a man. But now I cope by telling bad people exactly how I feel about them, so that they decide being around me isn't the best option, and, and I don't have to drink to cope. <laughs> well, that's good. Assertiveness, yes. When I was going through anger management classes. Um, they said my problem and why I get so angry is I'm not assertive enough and I keep everything inside. So I had to learn how to be assertive. That's why I seem cross sometimes because I was literally trained by my therapist to be assertive. So right. I have to be assertive for my mental health. Yeah. I have to tell people what kind of assholes they are when they're Look, assholes. So I understand your position 100%. You're a mirror. You're a mirror. Yeah. That's all you are. Exactly. And that really pisses people off sometimes. So he gets picked on probably. Yeah. Yeah. He has long hair too. He's got some allies. He, oh, he's got, he's got his allies. He's got allies. He's got his allies. He's yeah. got long hair. So everyone's like saying he's trans. God. But that's so dumb. Oh, it's so mean. Do you realize how did they do? Was Heath Ledger trans? Was Heath Ledger trans? No. no. And he's one of the, the most desired men on that's ever lived. 
Okay, can we st some guys look better with long hair? Doesn't mean you're trans. I got that in fucking jail. I got that bullshit in jail. I, I walk in the thing, and the guy's up on the, they, there's like a mezzanine deal. I, 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 you know, like a prison. I was in jail. And the guy looks down at me and he goes, oh my God, look at that transvestite. And I said to him, dude, I just got long hair. I ain't trans. He's like, yeah, yeah, I'm a motherfucker. I'm like, okay. Jeez, people are ruthless. Great actor. Yeah, he was. He was one of the best. Hey, Neo Cat Goddess. <laughs> that was, that's a quote. Okay, he screamed at you. And if it. my son ends up being trans, I will love him regardless. Yeah. He, he'll be a pretty girl. He, he's he got my face. Yeah, he's got your face. He'll be a pretty girl. Uh, Donnie, you think that's funny, bro? That is funny, isn't it? I laughed. I took it fine. My 17-year-old has long hair and he is straight. Yeah. Yeah. It, 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 long, look, chicks dig long hair, okay? I'm telling you, that's a fact. Glad you support them. Absolutely. A hundred percent. Oh, God, I would not. Just William has. OK, I'm going to talk about William. This, yeah. It doesn't mean I love him more than Zachary. Right. William has an amazing mind and he loves psychology and he's very caring person who genuinely is a good person. Like a very good person. Zachary, he's he's brilliant in another way. Mathematics, he is mm. I just mm -hmm. I I I couldn't do the stuff he does with mathematics. He he he's a genius. Yeah, I'm smelling rain man. He's close to that type he, of a genius. He's a freaking genius. And, and he picks up random facts. So well. So, like, you could be talking about something, like, from the 80s, and he'll know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. Because he's already researched it. Yeah. Like, my son, I taught my sons well because uh, they have a love huh? for research. Who who are you talking about, Neo Cat Goddess? Who? What guy? Could you help me out there? That guy was trying to have someone target you sexually. Ill. That's right. People do deserve love. Um, I pinned it. Zachary's huh? autistic. Donnie got pinned comment. Yeah, yeah. Zachary's autistic. So he thinks differently. Um, but how he thinks is absolutely brilliant. And I agree, Chubby Dubby. I'm so proud of my sons, how intelligent, um, compassionate, and integral they are. Because that's the type of men I wanted to make. And I, my parenting style um, for like discipline was one, two, three magic, which you just count. Uh -huh. One, two... And usually they stop that behavior. And if they do that behavior, they get a timeout. That's how I disciplined. Okay? There you go. Um, but I always taught them to do their own research about things and learn for themselves. And I really, I, I really tried to instill a love of learning from them. And I did it because they genuinely have a love for learning. And I'm, I just, like... That's the men I wanted was smart, intelligent, compassionate people who who cares for others and loves others and doesn't want to do harm for others. But at the same time, smart and brilliant and has the ability to change the world. I, I really believe that in my sons because they're just so marvelously uh, smart. I just like... They're smarter than me. William and Zachary are way smarter than me. And I'm pretty fucking smart. Um, so 
I'm just, I'm, I'm very proud of them on where they are. And I really, I really love the fact that they are like so independent um, because I am disabled and they needed to be independent because I'm disabled. And I'm just, I'm just proud of what kind of men they're turning into genuinely. And um, I don't love my sons based on their gender. I, I love my sons based on their spirit. The fact that they came from my body. Uh, and, and they're just really awesome people that people should get to know because they're just, they're amazing my sons and when they're not nitpicking with each other and fighting I love our conversations because they're just so deep and intimate and beautiful and I just have the best times with my babies you know um, they were the only people for the longest time that genuinely loved me and didn't leave my side. And I thank them for that, for not leaving my side because I really need them in my life. Um, but see, they feel the same. They feel that they need me in their life too. Um, and I'm sorry, I'm getting all teary eyed. It's just, I love my babies and I'm proud of my babies and I miss my babies at the same time. But they're men and your children grow up and they want to do other things without you. And I don't want to be the type of mother like my mother was and restrict them from having a life. I don't want to be that mother. I don't want to do that damage to them that was done to me. You know, everything I did as a parent was opposite of what my mother did. And I did it purposely because I wanted to see a life created where it didn't have that control. You know what I mean? Instead, they become the people they wanted to become as opposed to becoming the people I wanted them to become. But it's funny. They actually became, without my interference, the people I truly wanted them to be. And I think it's just because I just talked to them and I tried to teach them morality. I would never allowed them to fight with each other. I always told them to talk it out. You know? Yeah. you Use your voice, not your fists. Yeah. And they do. And they're <laughs> really awesome dudes. Yeah. Like, you love talking to William and, 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 and Zachary. Yeah, dude. Your oldest is getting married in two days? Oh, my God. Donnie saw your book on Amazon. <laughs> That's cool, bro. Yeah, it's there. You get it a buck. You and River are really smart. Thank you, Donnie. A mother and son bond is unbreakable no matter what. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Thank you, Donnie. God is great. Yeah, thank you for prayers. I need them. We need them. Both of us. Yeah. Because we're both, all of us are just, we're struggling. Yeah. In our own ways. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm struggling physically. He's struggling mentally. Yeah. And it's very hard for us to sink at this point because I'm struggling on a different level than he is. In different ways. Like, I'm not suffering mentally. I'm actually very good mentally. I'm actually, I'm actually the most stable I think I've ever been. Praise God. And I knew this day would have fucking happened. Because I've heard 
people with borderline personality disorder, they get better as they get older mm -hmm. and they learn and grow about their disorder. Mm -hmm. And I've gotten so much better. Yeah, you have. I didn't lash out on you. No, you didn't. I was mad. I was upset. But I did not lash out. No, you didn't. And I'm proud of myself for that. Yeah, I am too. I'm proud of you for it. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm proud of myself for that. Should that I be. didn't lash out. Because that's an accomplishment. Yeah, it is. That's Christ. That's Jesus. Because I've really, I've really prayed and really focused on myself lately, internally. And I've had this internal dialogue on how to be a better person, how to uh, alleviate hate in a non-harmful way. I've really been focusing on that in my life. You know, mainly it's me playing, you, you see me physically playing Stardew and and Coral Island or, or Animal Crossing. But really, it's just my time to think for myself and really internally get to know who I am. Because I, I really been struggling since my dad died um, mm -hmm. about who I am as a person. Because it feels like when he died, a part of me died also. You did. Literally. You're part of your dad. I know. I miss him so fucking much. I know. I miss my dad so bad lately. I just, I want to just watch Star Trek with him. Mm -hmm. I want to watch Alien with him. I want to do what I used to do with him. Watch Food Network with him. Me, I, know how that feels, I miss his bear hugs. He was the best hugger in the world. Mm -hmm. There's no one better of a hugger than my dad. Mm -hmm. He was the best. Mm -hmm. And he was so comfort comforted. Mm -hmm. And he was he was very protective if he thought a scumbag was around me. He he he'd like really get in a man's face and like want to kick their ass. He needed to and do he, that with his wife. And the thing is, is uh. he was such a big man that his presence just scared everyone. Of course. Yeah. He you know, he's die. military, dude. He he yeah. And he can take care of himself very well. He hits hard. Trust me. He hits hard. I'm sure. I know. <laughs> I've been hit by my dad. He's been abusive toward me. Doesn't mean I don't miss him or I don't love him. And I don't value those good moments. I do. and Because that's who my dad truly was. Is a good man. But he struggled from alcoholism. So did my mom. Even though she always acted like she didn't struggle with any substance abuse. She totally did. She'd pop painkillers like they were Tic Tacs. Wow. Mm. Mm. And she'd be so mean and vicious and force my dad to hit us when we were kids. Wow. But that wasn't my dad. That was just him being controlled. A Catholic husband. Yeah. He never left by he never left her side, even when she cheated on him mm. and divorced him. Yeah. She cheated on him multiple times though. That's literally a very abusive relationship. Yeah. He your dad was abused in the relationship. He was. Hundred percent. She she would hit him a lot. I bet. I bet. Um so that's where I probably learned that behavior and why I needed therapy for it. Well, you said also that the, the, that brother-in-law thing just pushed you it into... It pushed the, me. Yeah, it pushed me. Into a different direction. Yeah, I shouldn't have gone that direction. I did. I fell. I fell. Yeah. I fell. Yeah, but you... And I'm so sorry that I fell. 
it sucks. Like you, you recognize it. I do recognize it, and I'm re and I'm repentive of it, and I hope it never happens again. Amen. But Amen. I've been very good mentally lately. Yeah. You know, even though I'm missing with my dad, I'm missing my dad terribly. But that has nothing to do with mental health. That's normal to miss your parent when they pass. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And it doesn't matter if your parents were abusive. They're still your parents. People are always like, oh, you, you, you don't care. That, like these assholes when the day you're, you announced that your, your dad died in mind. They said I was lying about it at first. <laughs> yeah, of course. Of course I would know before you stupid freaks. I'm family. Yeah. Holy shit. Go figure. I'm fucking family. I know a little bit more than you. But it's like they try to be like, oh, you know, why, <laughs> you, why, <laughs> why do you feel bad? You hate your parents. It don't matter what's going on in your head about your parents. It's not you... hating them. It's mad at them. There's a difference. <laughs> Man. Yeah. Here, just so you can see our pretty face. Kissing. I... I... Keep talking. Try to talk over me. I have to pee. Okay. It's the coffee. I swear to God. It's yeah. the fucking coffee. Probably. All right. Talk loud. I'll... Okay. Hot cloud. Yeah. Okay. Well, let me see what's going on. Hey, what's up, uh, Damon? How you doing, my man? Damon, isn't it funny? Isn't it fucking hilarious, uh, Damon, that uh, G-Man is trying to put on me that I'm a transsexual? Well, let me say to G-Man, I don't know about you, but I, 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 I think that you might be just thinking that the reverend dude was a little bit too hot for your taste, man. Did, did you think I'd make a good-looking female, Gary? Come on now. Is that where you're going with that, buddy? Huh? He's so gay. You think that, bro? What do you think about that? I think maybe you had a little rev crush. You know how Ran, you love Ran, you worship. You very touchy to Jason. You weirdo. All the time. Yeah, he really was. Uh, he's really Drag touchy. is right. He is very feely touchy. With men. With men. Correct. <laughs> That's wild. That's wild. Yeah. He just needs to just let himself go. That's why, uh, yeah, if you're that way, that's fine. Because I'm sorry. A lot of men who stay in the closet are very predatory. Definite. That's. Without a doubt. Uh, Someone got to rip a gump, grumpy. Uh, here's the deal, though. He also said, "I we, see we you you since we're on, might as well." Uh, that that he has questions about our sex life. That's weird. First of all, you're not related to us in any way. You're not a marriage counselor. What what exactly would be your interest in our sex life? That's real next level weirdness, creepy shit. All you need to know is it's really fucking good. Here you go. I mean... I'm not complaining. He ain't complaining about it. Yeah. That is not a problem in this marriage is sex. So there you go with that. I I mean, what, what could have possibly, what kind of questions could you have, Gary? I mean, yeah, there's some nights where he's not up to it or I'm not up to it. That's yeah. fine. Yeah, that happens. That, that's part of being human. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's just being human. But yeah, I mean, if you want to know, it's real good. And that would be basically all I would say to you, because what, you want details? Yeah, you're weird. 
Go watch a porno freak. Yeah, that if you're really, you want to truly know, you want a nut, Gary. Go watch a porno. <laughs> That's it. If you really want to get intimate with us, you can watch our porno. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Apparently, it's I, somewhere on I Twitter. I want to see it, but I have. What is it? Sexy for Christ or some shit like that? That's what he said. <laughs> Someone got to rip a grumpy. Oh, he's gonna bitch and complain like the bitch he is about this shit. He always does. He acts like such a big victim. Yeah. Every day he tries to talk shit my way. I didn't do anything to you other than tell you not to uh, post me punching someone because I don't want to be looked at as violent. And I'm not fighting with anyone. And you're trying to get me in the middle of your fucking fights. And I also told you not to call women whores. And you're butthurt over it. And yeah, I'm mad at you because you put us in a fucking shitty hotel where everything that we owned was stolen from us. And we were surrounded by a bunch of meth-dealing users. I don't want to be around people who do meth. They're fucking crazy. You piece of shit. That's how you take care of a brother and sister? Fuck you. That's how you treat someone who gives you $160,000. Fuck you. That's fucked up shit. You're fucked up in the head, and you don't follow Jesus Christ. Because if you were of Jesus Christ, you would hold us in high regard for changing your fucking life around, you piece of shit. <laughs> you don't like to hear those words? Tough shit. You are horrible to us. Always talking about feminism with me. I don't give a shit about the topic feminism. I just have core beliefs that I should be treated equally and have equal pay, be able to vote, and be able to have a job. Oh my God, I'm such a horrible person for that. Well, at the same time, you hypocritically are telling me to get a job while at the same time you're saying that getting a job is feminism, you stupid fuck. And then you're telling me that the man, you need to submit to the man while you're listening to your fucking sister all the goddamn time. Who the fuck do you think you are running someone's life like that? I didn't treat you like that. I didn't treat you like scum. You treated me like scum. You treated me like I was a goddamn enemy. And I came to you with genuine fucking kindness and love and compassion. And you took that, you threw it in my face, you said fuck you because I refused to take your come-ons and come on to you and, and actually do something toward you. I don't give a fuck about you, dude. You want to know the truth? There's a fucking truth, bro. I don't look at men sexually. Okay. Do you get that? There's only one man I'm attracted to, and that's my husband. Ain't gonna be you, ain't gonna be Sam, ain't gonna be uh, a drag, ain't gonna be anyone but my husband. Mm. And the fact that you claim you're a Christian while you're not standing on monogamy in marriage is pretty fucking insightful to me mm. about who you are and who you belong to. Mm. 
because you don't value marriage. And you certainly don't respect your brother's wife.